Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I'm sorry I'm late, but I was held up by Garrett Bowles Perna. Thanks for the assist down the gooch. How do we do today's episode? Because this Broncos Bears game was royally fucked with terrible officiating throughout the game. This should have gone down as one of the best first wins for any new head coach, but Broncos fans were robbed because NFL referees aren't punished like the treasonous cowards they are when they fail at their job. Off with their heads. Honestly though, this, this is a weird situation because the Broncos were robbed of a victory, but I also feel that the Bears earned a victory. And usually in situations where shitty refing happens, that's not the case. So I don't know how to deal with that emotionally. Now, not a lot happened in this game till the last few minutes, which means my focus today will be on those final few minutes, the Garrett Bowles holding marathon, and some desperately positive spins for Broncos fans. And a nod to the Bears for winning a crazy game and admitting they too were screwed by bad officiating. My goal is to unite us all against one common enemy, the referees, who have taken victories away from every NFL team except the Patriots. Let's get sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel, click the notification button if you want to know about the daily football coverage happening here. Also, this episode is sponsored by my bookie. For all of your sports betting needs this season, check out my bookie. You can use my promo code that's good or the link in the description and they will double your first deposit up to $1,000. I'm not sure if you can bet on refs screwing up games royally but you can make the games interesting at one of the world's leading sports betting providers. My bookie has live in-game betting on every single NFL game. They've got the most rewarding player perks in the business. And for you fantasy guys out there, you can even bet the over under on how many fantasy points a player will score, which with all the QB injuries out there should be very interesting. Again, use my link in the description of the promo code that's good when creating your account at my bookie and they will Will double your first deposit. I'd like to start by thanking announcer Dick Stockton for calling where the Broncos play Mile High Stadium. And in the 18 years that they've been at Mile High Stadium home. Absolutely no mention of Empower Field. That's good enough for me to put my stock back inside Dick, who didn't even try to hide his sexual innuendos during the game. And Patterson will give the Bears great penetration deep inside. And yet, that deep penetration did not hurt as much as the loss. The last time I experienced a roller coaster of emotions like the ones this game forced upon me was in high school when my girlfriend broke up with me after telling me she was not pregnant while we were at the fair riding a roller coaster. She also left me for a guy named Eddie, so you can see why I might hate Pinheiro. The unnoticed part of this loss is that kickers may actually be cursed by Vic Fangio. Think about what his presence did to Cody Parkey last year. Then remember Brandon McManus missed the game tying extra point but was saved because Buster Screen was off sides. And then with Fangio on the sideline, a guy who sounds like he's Fangio's favorite ingredient on a club sandwich beat him with a 53-yard dagger that should have never been kicked. The positive spin is it's never good to beat your old team in your first matchup as a new head coach. Look what happened to Matt Patricia last year. This was Patricia week one with the Lions. And this was Patricia just days after beating Bill Belichick. And remember what happened to the Broncos after Josh McDaniels beat the Patriots as the Broncos' new head coach. So maybe, even though the immediate feeling is betrayal, this is the football gods looking out for Broncos country. Had Fangio beat the Bears, he may have started to look like this in a week. The biggest reason the Broncos lost this game, mistakes. Prior to the amazing lead-taking drive at the end of the fourth quarter, Joe Flacco threw this interception on the goal line on third down, taking points off the board. The Broncos tried to run a legal pick play here, and the Bears read it perfectly. Why the fuck can't anyone do this but the Patriots? 
With two and a half minutes left in the game, Denver faced a fourth and ten, and Flacco rifles a pass to Cortland Sutton, who did a great job ensuring that he had enough yards to convert. Flacco then found the other second-year receiver, Deshaun Hamilton, to convert a first on the left sideline, followed by another fourth down conversion to Cortland Sutton. Two fourth down conversions on what should have been a game winning drive is extremely positive for a developing Broncos offense. That training bra is about to come off as those developing offenses just plop out and take over the NFL. Maybe I should've went with training wheels. Uh, then you have Emmanuel Sanders, brilliant. His brilliant catch in the corner of the end zone. That's as perfect of an NFL catch as you can make. Far better than Sam Darnold catching mono last week. It's the kind of kneel down even Colin Kaepernick would not regret. And I have no idea how Emmanuel Sanders makes this play, but it was like watching the average Bears fan fit into a triple XL Khalil Mack jersey. He just barely made it. Here's what I do admire. Fangio knew what he wanted and Scangarello ran the exact same play as he was going to run before the back-to-back -back penalties, which to me means these coaches are confident, know what they want to do, and I think over time that will pay off. And they were successful. Denver took the lead with 31 seconds left on the clock. I felt good about the lead too, and the time left as Denver limited Trubisky all game. I believe he had 90 passing yards prior to that final drive. The only way Chicago gets this W is with some help from the referees. The call on Bradley Chubb is bad. It gave the Bears 15 yards and a first down that they did not earn. You might even argue here that the Bears lineman, Leno, got away with the face mask, and even blocked Bradley Chubb into Trubisky. Again, this would not have been an issue had Flacco not thrown that goal line pick, or if Denver gets a field goal on one of the drives that was pushed out of field goal range by Garrett Bowles penalties. Chris Harris Jr. was asked about coverage on the Allen Robinson reception, and he said he didn't know who was supposed to be covering Robinson because he was in man covering somebody else. So he was the only defender there to get him down. And no, I don't think Chris Harris should have been looking at the clock as to when to touch Allen. That's not how you play defense. Either way, the officials gave the Bears the fastest timeout I have ever seen in any NFL game. Please show me another example where the refs stop the clock the millisecond a player's knee touches the ground. Eddie Pinheiro comes in and makes the biggest kick of his life and then tells me to start believing in God on Twitter. <laughs> your God can go ahead and die, Eddie. I hope Aquaman defeats your God that would do a loss like this to me. Don't you dare shove religion down my throat after I suffer the worst loss of 2019. Why does God hate Cody Parkey but love Eddie Pinheiro? And I better start believing in God after you make a 53-yard field goal is the worst argument for religion since Scientology was fucking invented, Eddie. Hey, hey, Eddie, when my parents die, why don't you come to their funeral and tell me Santa Claus is also now dead because he was actually my dad. What do I care? All you do is ruin my days, Eddie. There's no way my God would reward men who choose to dress like this before the game with a controversial win. God did all the cowboy rewarding he could in the 90s and when real life cowboys stole this great country from the Native Americans. God is done with cowboy favors. To be fair to Bears fans, uh, this apparently is a penalty. Uh, Leonard Floyd getting punished by the now flaccid league cause we always soft. Eddie Goldman also flagged because his body fell onto Joe Flacco. The NFL really has no belief in the laws of physics, which falls in line with the other laws they don't believe in, like the laws against domestic violence or sexual assault. The roughing the passer penalty is horseshit. I said it was horseshit all last season, and the Goldman flag did help Denver kick a field goal in this game. But let's not pretend that that flag has the same magnitude of affecting the outcome of a game as a flag thrown with 30 seconds left on the clock. To be brutally honest, Goldman is at fault here. Not for hitting Joe Flacco, but for not letting Garrett Bowles hold him on that play. Moving on, 
An exploration at left tackle, the Garrett Bowles tragedy. I blame the University of Utah for teaching Garrett Bowles the position of left tackle and falsely leading him to believe that means he can tackle players during the game. I'm left tackle, so I do tackles. The issue is that Garrett Bowles doesn't know when to stop blocking or holding, just like Lenny never knew when to stop petting rabbits. Denver does not need John Elway. They need John Steinbeck to rewrite the Broncos draft history. Garrett Bowles appeared to hold Khalil Mack every single play, making Mack very tired in the fourth quarter when the Bears needed him the most. Had the Broncos won this game, I was prepared to take the angle and call Garrett Bowles a genius. If Fox can make me believe Kurt Minifee is set to star in A Beautiful Mind 2 with Terry Bradshaw as his sidekick, then Bowles holding Mack every single play because four to five holds is better than four to five sacks is not the worst strategy to deploy. I could have believed that. Bowles holds stand out because they always seem to be very costly. In this game, he negated a 20 yard run by Philip Lindsay. He's had 16 holds accepted against him in the last 34 games and 34 flags thrown on him. I asked YouTube's best football tape grinder, Brett Coleman, about his thoughts on Garrett Bowles. He said, I wish my mother held me as a child as much as Garrett Bowles holds pass rushers every Sunday. Are we as fans too hard on Garrett Bowles? Sure, but as he begins year three, he's not getting any better. And I think he basically admitted, like an alcoholic, he doesn't believe he has a problem. I mean, of course, I'm a physical player. I'm not gonna stop my physicalness. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, to be honest, that's that's what I love to do. I'm a physical player, you know, playing the left tackle and protecting a high caliber quarterback, you gotta put your body on the line. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna change that at all. I mean, just Bulls honestly doesn't know he's doing something very wrong. And that might be worse than a bad left tackle who just keeps getting beat because he's not as talented. As Jeff Schwartz pointed out on Twitter, there were 92 holding calls on Sunday before the Falcons Eagles game, which is nearly twice the average. Referees are making it a point of emphasis and are calling it frequently. Not sure how that makes the product better, but that's their call, even though it goes against the NFL's philosophy of only helping the offense. Why can't the Broncos currently sack quarterbacks? That's almost a bigger problem. Denver went another game without a sack, and I'm not going to look it up, but I'm sure this has never happened in the Von Miller era. Yes, on 4th and 15 with the game on the line, you need someone to actually get to the quarterback. So why is this happening? Well, the Bears sort of copied the Raiders game plan. Get the ball out quickly. Mitch Trubisky averaged 4.4 yards per attempt, mostly by throwing the ball to the flat. Only five of his 16 completions were to wide receivers. Unfortunately, one of those was the biggest play of the game, which is why I'm about to say something very crazy. By the end of this season, I believe the Broncos will be in a better position than the Bears. Chicago has an amazing defense on every level. But the Joe Flacco-led offense outperformed what Aaron Rodgers was able to do against that unit. Both the offense and defense for the Broncos improved from week one to week two. Isaac Yadam played better. Justin Simmons was a stud. Derek Wolf played better, even with two BS holding calls against him. Emmanuel Sanders was big dick level better. Noah Fant played better with room to grow in the blocking department. Colby Wadman played better. Mistakes, the same. Again, the killer was the mistakes. Fix those, and I believe Vaughn and Chubb will start getting to the quarterback and that there is still hope for this team. Plus, the AFC has already lost Andrew Luck, Ben Roethlisberger, Nick Foles. So who is to say, by week 15, Flacken off isn't the only starting quarterback left standing. There's a chance Tom Brady's plastic surgery could implode around his eyes, causing NFL official level blindness. For Garrett Bowles, it's holding time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Except you can, because we have no other options. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on the YouTubes. Uh, appreciate you watching the Broncos reviews and all my NFL news videos and following me on Twitter and Instagram and following at WillKey6, who helps me write the football videos here. I'm telling you how much I appreciate that. Especially after losses, it means so much more.